Okay, guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit late this week, um, but I'm going to ramble on a little bit about uh, athlete load monitoring. So, enjoy. Okay, so I, I think the first thing I should point out is that um, I'm not a sports scientist. Um, so anything that I know, I, I kind of uh, read books on or I've uh, done a lot of Google searching. Um, but I was asked to talk a little bit about um, how I try to monitor load and why I do it the way I, I do it. Um, and the, the, the bottom line is that uh, the reason I'm, I try to monitor the load that we put the athletes through is because I want to, first of all, ensure that we limit the, the risk of injury. And secondly, I want to make sure that we optimize the training as much as possible. Um, now, the caveat to that is that um, I, I'm the head coach of a very small provincial program with no money. Um, so we have to try and find ways to do it on the cheap. All right. So, um, I also love Excel uh, and um, I try to put those things together to help me find a way to keep track on what we do and present it in a way that um, looks pretty um, and allows me to um, see things at a glance. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do here is try and share a screen with you and, and we'll see if this works. Um, so. The first thing I try to do is, well, this is the dashboard. Okay, so this is the way the, the, the information gets presented to well, to me or to the athletes. Okay, um, across the bottom here, we can see we have some data collection. We'll just quickly run through the, the way we collect. It, it's a bit messy in the background here, as you can see. There's just lots and lots of numbers, lots and lots of stuff. All right, um, but effectively across the top, we, we collect some wellness reports. We put in some information around the cycles that we're on, perceived rates of exertion, um, and bits and bobs like that across the top, body composition, um, shrimp scores. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. There are quite a lot of hidden cells in here, which uh, contain just formulas, really. So that's where we collect the data. Okay, now, if I go back to the, the dashboard, okay, what we have here, is um well basically the the interesting ones i think it is um trim scores all right so trim scores are uh training impulse scores and they're used to describe the training load in a single figure um it uses heart rate the way we work it out the way i work it out is i use the heart rate during the session their resting heart rate and their max heart rate and the duration of the session to score each session um and if the session scores under 70, it's an easy session. Uh, if the session scores between 70 and 140, it's an immediate moderate session. Most of our sessions are moderate sessions. And if it scores over 140, it, it becomes a hard session. Now, if I if I zoom in a little bit here to the bits, so it's a bit too close. Uh, the bits that we're interested in is this, at the top. All right, so this is how I present the, the trim scores. Um, this one is the, the overall session trim score. So as you can see, it's in the green, so it's relatively easy. Um, as it becomes harder, it moves around and becomes red because I like graphs and it looks pretty. All right. The second way that I, I use the trim score is I, I calculate it per minute. Okay, because obviously some of our sessions are two hours. Some of our sessions are 90 minutes. Gym sessions are, are sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so I want to know am I suddenly increasing the load in relation to the duration of the session, all right? Because in the session load is never really varies. This one on the left, it doesn't really vary too much um, because, well, if we have a hard session, we always follow the hard work up with the drills and skills sort of work. So it brings the overall score of the session down. Um, but the trim per minute on the, the right-hand side, 
does tend to come around. All right, so it tends to come around into the reds. As you can see, this is Daniel's. Um, and today's session, per minute, was quite hard. But the session wasn't very long. So the overall trim score of the session was a reasonably easy session. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the way I do that. Um, reasonably simple, I think. Um, and I try to present that as nicely as I can. Okay. Um, the second way that I, I track um, the, the load of a session is through their, their acute training load and their critical, their chronic training load, sorry. All right, so acute training load is short term, chronic training load is long term. Okay, so the best way that I try to think of it is acute training load is fatigue, chronic training load would be related to fitness. All right, and the difference between those two um, can be thought of as freshness. Uh, so the more fresh they are, the more ready they are to race, okay? Um, and what I try to do there is avoid sudden spikes um, in, in the, the relationship between the acute and chronic loads. Um, I do it three ways, all right? Because I like to have double checks. So I have at the bottom here a rolling average of acute and chronic ratio workload, relative workload. Um, and have an exponentially weighted mean average of the acute and chronic relationship of workload or ratio to workload. And what I try to do with these two little arrows, again, I like graphs, so I like to try and find new ways to do things, is I try to keep this little pointer in the green all the time. If it was into the red, I don't lose any sleep over it. Um, as long as it doesn't stay in the red for too long, it drops into the orange, I try to work them a little bit harder. Um, and what I, what, I, what I think is that the green is the sweet spot, really. That's where we're trying to keep it. In the green is the sweet spot. So this is a rolling average on, on seven days. This is a exponentially weighted mean average over 48 days. All right, and then this one on the, the left, the bigger one, is the day-to-day. 1.0 here is the sweet spot. That's where we want to try and be, as close to 1.0 as possible. So we don't want a, a huge difference between these two. All right, and that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, and the last time, I, that's what, the way I do this, is in this, this is the weekly relationship weekly um, percentage. So as you can see now, we it's been a bit weird in the last couple of weeks because we've lost the pool, obviously. Um, so this has changed significantly, um, which is a little bit annoying. But I try to keep these in around 90 to 100. So they're kind of in the same ballpark. Now, I haven't said that. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep if, if there's a little bit of a change. All right. But in order to try to optimize the load. I try to keep that relationship, that ratio between 0.8 and 1.3. Okay. Um, and that's that's kind of where we're at with it. If if the increase, if the increase in the load is more than 10%, okay, then the, the risk to injury is more than more than 10%, it, it goes up exponentially. Um, so I try to keep that as, as samey as possible, if that makes sense, okay? Now, as I said, the, the way we do this is to try to optimize load. So if I scroll up to the top here and try to risk injury or limit the risk to injury, all right? The, the third way that I try to do that is with this monotony school here. So this is um, weekly load across the season. And as you can see, we've got the first cycle, second cycle which was finished here now we've had weeks where we've been um compromised in the way we can train so the bars are the load the little line is monotony now to work out monotony it's a it's a standard deviation really um so it's a it's a reasonably complex formula um it takes into account strain um, now, strain on its own doesn't tell us very much because uh, athletes can deal with different amounts of strain. It depends really on the athlete, all right? Um, but when you work at the strain with the load, uh, you get a monotony score. And the monotony score, if the monotony score and the strain score are high, 
then the, the risk to injury is increased again because you're doing a lot of work at a high level and it's always the kind of the same work, if that makes sense. So the monotony and at a high level can be the, the strain. So this in this little period now where there's no pull, so the variety of training is, is limited. You can see that it's gone red, it's gone red. So we're having to keep a little bit of an eye to make sure that the, the injury risk, while it's high, we're able to manage it a little bit. All right. Um, so that's that's kind of how I try to do that. Um, this graph at the bottom here, this is our dashboard. I, I'm very proud of the dashboard to be fair. I built it and I think it looks quite nice. So in here, this is this is our weekly load. The, the blue one is the planned load. Okay. And uh, I try to keep the bars. This is uh, last six weeks plus this week inside these little lines that again represents a 25% deviation plus or minus in the overall load. <clears throat> so if it drops too low, we, we risk going into an adaption phase and then uh, we, we'd have to build back up our training so we don't get injured. If it goes too high, then all of a sudden you've put a lot of spike in there and, and injury becomes a risk again. Um, so I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see the whole thing. All right, so this is, this is the, the dashboard, okay. Um, as you can see, it's fully interactive. It's, it's quite nice. So we have, it's Danielle's. We put our max heart rate goes in over here. Um, this is volume uh, in terms of swimming, swimming volume. As you can see, it's dropped off a cliff because there is no swimming. Um, load, as I said, um, the wellness scores get tracked in here. So with the average over the whole season, the average in the last 30 days and the average in the last seven days, and it has a nice little line graph across the bottom. If wellness drops, that line goes red, and we gotta we gotta be aware of it. Um, these two lines really just tell me the difference from one week to the next. I try not to change the load too much. In here, we'd gone into into taper, and then we had to pull back. Um, so it, it, it's it's a little bit annoying, but it's the way it is. Um, so. What I can do is I can look at the first cycle. All right, so this is cycle number one and how we looked with our wellness, with our volume, our load, and then the time spent in each of the energy systems, heart rate zones. Uh, we use polar heart rate monitors. So um, time spent in each of the heart rate zones in cycle one, uh, cycle two. Uh, as you can see, the last two weeks of cycle two, Training stopped, unfortunately. And then in cycle three, this is where we are now. Uh, no swimming getting done. So the load is all in uh, dry land. Um, and that's, then obviously we can go full season, which is, which is where we are. Okay. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, and I don't know if that's really very helpful to everybody or not. I'm not really entirely sure. Um, I find it a little bit interesting. Um, I quite like going into the detail of, of how to build the, the, the dashboards and find out the stuff myself. Um, like I say, I am aware that, that obviously if you have a little bit of cash to spend, um, there's, there's much more professional ways of doing it. But as I said, we, we're a very small club with um, no cash to spend whatsoever. So we have to find alternative ways. Um, and that's just one of the ways that I've tried to do it. Um, I said, it's not perfect. Um, we use polar, polar heart rate monitors. So we get a live feed on the, on the screen. I can see their heart rates as they swim. Um, and then I use that to, to give me a training in, impulse. Uh, and then we use their perceived rates of exertion and their wellness scores to, to track everything through. Um, and it's a little bit time consuming. Um, it's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it's it's kind of where we are at the moment. It's kind of it's kind of um, it, it's helpful because it's meant that we've had no apart from things you guess can't legislate for. We've had no injuries, uh, and um, I think it's safe to say that especially with Danielle, uh, we've had the best since we started using this two and a half years ago. It's kind of developed over those two and a half years, but we've had definitely the, the best two and a half years um, 
I can remember having uh, in terms of record breaking. She's it's it's just been it's been fantastic. And sometimes it's it's about trying to find ways to to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Uh, so that's kind of what we do. Um, I hope you find that a little bit interesting. Um, if not, sorry. Uh, and if there's anything else you want to know, um, drop me a, a little ma a little message, and, and we'll see. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Check out some of our other videos, and um, I'll see you next time, I guess. All right. See you next time.